In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Just a few thoughts on this great feast of a holy abbot, St. Romuald. One of the principal teachings in the rule of St. Benedict is two things. Remember the shortness of this life, how short this life really is, and uh, keep the day of judgment before our eyes. And in doing so, we will, we will sin less. And then secondly, hasten to do now what will profit you for all eternity. Hasten, be quick, don't waste time. Be quick. <clears throat> do quickly now what will profit you for all eternity. So the life is short. We got to do now what was, what, what's going to help us get to heaven. And that means, says the Holy Ghost, take the axe to the root, <clears throat> cut off all the ropes and strings that are tying us down to the attachment and love of the things of this world and to anchor our heart into the things of heaven because that's where we're going. And we're going, to, we're going to have to make absolute decisions anyway. And it's better to do it when we're young follow our Lord and cut the ropes and go and follow him. And this is what he's talking about. All who have left, father, brothers, sisters, father, mother, wife, and sons, and fields for my name's sake. Now, when you leave, this is, there's a saying among the, in the monastery, when you leave your brothers at home, you discover you have a whole new family of brothers and uh, by extension sisters and uh, father that's the superior and a, a great closeness to God our Lord and the Blessed Mother as it says in the Psalms my father and mother have left me <clears throat> but the Lord has taken me up so there are absolute decisions we have to make and many people, many, many, many souls, actually most, they never want to really follow our Lord. They never really want to commit to keeping his commandments, to growing in the love of God, to keeping the life of grace, and especially the vocation, the life of a priest, a nun or a monk. And our Lord is at demanding us, we all have to make some cuts. Everyone, even those who are in the world, must make cuts. Bad friends, bad influences, bad uh, temptations of the world. They must make cuts with the axe. If we don't, we're going to do it anyway when we die. And for most souls, they're going to wake up at their death, realizing they blew their whole life away, and they will be cast into hell, as Christ says, because they never made the absolute cuts. And they're going to face those souls, and may we not be numbered among them through God's mercy. But uh, at death, there's an absolute cut. And there's, in hell, there is no joy, no comfort, no ease, no refreshment, no time of just taking a break. There's no such thing for all eternity. This is how serious this life on earth is. It's so short, but very serious. So hasten to do now what will profit you for all eternity, says St. Benedict. So he imposes this on the monks 
which is really the spirit of the holy the teaching, the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. Apropin quavidim vos premium day, he says. The kingdom of God is right on you. It's drawn close right on you. That is, certainly when we die, we face the kingdom of God or rejection from it. But on earth also, we belong to the city above or the city below by what we love, says St. Augustine. If we love God and strive always to live in his grace, even if we should fall and slip, get back up quick and live in his grace, that decision is uh, the kingdom of God is in us by sanctifying grace. And the opposite is also true. A soul in mortal sin and who does, doesn't get out of mortal sin and stays attached to it, he grows in love with that city below, the damnation and separation from God and the fires of hell. So he's lost the kingdom of God by mortal sin, and they live in that state of damnation already. And that's why in many accounts in the saints' lives of people who have died, and they know they were going to hell, they just knew it. They didn't have to see our Lord. They didn't have to hear anything. They just hear the final sentence, depart from me. You never knew me in this life. How can I? I'm not going to know you in this, the eternity. So there's a, there's a story of a priest <coughs> who's still alive, actually. A priest who was in a car accident. And uh, he crashed. He died. His soul went to the judgment. And this, I think he's a novice oil priest at the time. And um, <clears throat> he heard the voice of our Lord, depart from me. You had 20-something years of priesthood. You only served yourself. You didn't serve me. But then a voice of a soft-spoken, sweet lady spoke, the Virgin Mary, of course. And she said, but my son, he did say the rosary sometimes. And he, to give him another chance. And our Lord, of course, he never refuses the request of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So he said, okay, you have, you have another chance. And he came back to himself. His soul came back to the body on the hospital table. And this priest realized he, he has his priesthood to serve Christ the King, to get souls to heaven and defend and preach the truth and the true faith. So um, <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is upon you already. We already make that decision now. And that's why it's a great grace for you seminarians to have made a certain choice already. But every day we must convert. And every day we must take the axe to the root because we always grow these tentacles of attachment to the world, our self-will, our, our own way of doing things, our own ways of awkward ways of thinking even. And we got to think according to Christ act according to Christ, live according to Christ, love according to Christ and his mother. And the main work is in the, in the soul, the correction of our thinking and the correction of what we love, who we love, what, in whom our whole love must be towards God. And that's a lifelong work. But many saints raise quickly to it, so God plucked them early, like little children's saints, or St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, they, were, they had attained the perfection of love that God wanted, and they, they died and went to heaven. So that is the most important virtue to strive for, the love of God. And with that comes, obviously, the love of neighbor. If we strive for this continually, you grow in all the virtues. That's why it's so important. So remember these great words of monastic principles. Remember, man, in the shortness of this life, Hasten, <clears throat> do quickly now what will profit you for all eternity. And in hockey games and in any sports, most sports, you've got two minutes to be out on the ice. And if you don't work hard, you need to just slack and you just <clears throat> coast. The coach is going to pull you and say, sit the bench, I'll put someone who works harder out there. And so you've got, we've got only the short time on this earth to play hard, work hard to obtain the kingdom of heaven. Don't waste it. Uh, there's a saying in, among coaches and athletes, um, the urgency of time. 
sense of urgency when you're on the field or on the ice. Sense of urgency. Don't waste time. So if that applies to a game, how much more to the greatest warfare and competition which we are in now. And as, a, as the Holy Ghost also says, and an old wise saying, learn from the enemy. Judas didn't waste time to betray our Lord. The darkness, right now, the works of darkness, they think they are almost got the Catholic Church destroyed. They're rejoicing. They're pulling out the wine already to see the Catholic faith completely extinguished. But they're not going to win. And who teaches us the greatest lesson of, of sense of urgency? The devil himself. He works day and night. He never sleeps. He, he's ravaging like a savage lion full of rabies, attacking day and night to destroy souls, bring them to hell, and destroy the bride of Christ the Catholic Church. So we got to be just as uh, zealous to rebuild the Church of Christ of Catholic tradition, save souls from hell, and sanctify and grow in the love of God. And in doing this, Sanctify thyself, and you'll sanctify others, is this old monastic saying as well. Work on becoming saints. Conquer thyself, and you will conquer the world, is an old saying as well. So hasten to now, for I'll profit you for all eternity. Let's ask the grace of this sense of urgency and the sense of absoluteness. That is the absolute cutting off of everything that goes against Christ. <laughs> We have a great lesson, I'll close with this, a very great lesson in uh, the great Hernand, Hernand uh, Cortez, the great Spanish conquistador. The modern historians love to trash on him and spit on him, but he was one of the greatest Catholic men that walked the face of the earth, a Spaniard. And when, he arrived, when he arrived on the beaches of, of Veracruz, which was the east side of Mexico, with his ships passing through the Gulf of Mexico, when they arrived on the shores, when all his men got out of the boats and all the supplies were disembarked, he said to his men, burn the ships. And some of them said, but captain, what if we have to escape? What if we have to seek refuge for to save our life? Because we're going into enemy territory. They might slaughter us all. He said, burn the ships. This, the decision was absolute. And they never went back. And they went to Mexico City, and he conquered the paganism and uh, put the Virgin Mary statue on top of the statue of the, py of the pyramid, smashed the pagan altars, and went to war. And Our Lady, <coughs> just not many years later, the Virgin Mary of Guadalupe would appear to strengthen and finish his work. So the absoluteness of what we're dealing with. Hasten to do now will profit you for all eternity. O Mary, conceived without sin, O Mary, conceived without sin, O Mary, conceived without sin, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dominus, Obiscum, Oremus.